Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Angel, and I'm an intern here at Launch. Thank you for joining us in our YouTube channel. We have an encouraging message for you, and we hope you enjoy it. Faster than a speeding bullet. Bending steel with his bare hands. Superman. What if we are more like him than we realize? Think about it. Superman draws his strength from the sun. We draw our strength from Jesus Christ, the sun. Superman is not from this world. As a child of God, we are not of this world. Superman possesses supernatural powers. We are supernaturally empowered. But hold up. One thing had the power to stop Superman, bringing the previously invincible down to his knees. Kryptonite. Is it true? Like Superman, our strength is being robbed, neutralizing our power and making us weak. Can it be Kryptonite has invaded our lives, taking root? Could it be? But in Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16, it says this. God's kingdom is like an estate manager who went out early in the morning to hire workers from his vineyard. They agreed on a wage of a dollar a day. How many of y'all will go work for a dollar a day? Imagine that. Hey, son, did you get a job? Yes, I did, Dad. How much are you getting paid? One dollar a day. No, nope, not happening. It's a different time. And they went to work. Later, about 9 o'clock, the manager saw some other men hanging around the town square unemployed. He told them to go to work in his vineyard, and he would pay them a fair wage. So they went. He did the same thing at noon, and then again at 3 o'clock, and then even again at 5 o'clock, he went back and found still others standing around. He said, why are you standing around all day doing nothing? How many of y'all heard that from your parents? Why are you standing around doing nothing? Summer's coming up, you know you're gonna hear that. Why are you just laying around doing nothing? You ever heard that before? You're like, because mom, I'm off, right? You're like, why are you doing nothing? And then this is your, always your response. They said, because no one hired us. You ever heard that? Why aren't you getting a job? Because no one's hiring me, mom. Yeah, that was me. He told them to go to work in his vineyard. In verse eight, when the day's work was over, the owner of the vineyard instructed his foreman, call the workers in and pay them their wages. Start with the last hired and go on to the first. We're almost done. Those hired at five o'clock came in and were each given a dollar. When those who were hired first saw that, they assumed they would get far more, but they got the same. Look at that. Each of them, one dollar. Taking a the dollar, they growls angrily to the manager. These last workers put in only one easy hour. and You just made them equal to us, who slaved all day under the scorching sun. They were almost there. He replied to one speaking for the rest, friend, I haven't been unfair. This is the manager talking. How many of y'all talk, talk to your friends like that? Friend. The manager's like, friend, like, I haven't been unfair. We agreed on the wage of a dollar, didn't we? So take it and go. I decided to give you, um, to give to the one who came last as the same as you. Can't I do what I want with my own money? Are you going to be stingy because I am generous? Tonight, if you're taking notes, I hope you are. The one thing tonight, the one piece of kryptonite that I really want to focus in on um, is entitlement. Look to the person next to you and say, are you entitled? Just say, are you entitled? Are you entitled? And if you want a different, a different title tonight, um, if you're taking notes, type this down. I don't deserve this. I don't deserve this. Tonight we're going to look at the kryptonite called entitlement. And we're going to kind of dissect that. So for the next few minutes... And we're going to have a conversation. So let's pray and we'll continue this. Jesus, we thank you so much uh, for your love, God. I just thank you uh, for who you are. I thank you, God, for what you're doing in this place. And I just pray for the next few minutes um, that you would speak to us. And I pray that if we walked in carrying something, God, I pray that we would leave it at the altar as we sang earlier. God, I pray that we would leave out of here encouraged, built up, Lord, and ready to do what you called us to. God, we thank you so much um, for everything that you're doing in our lives. We trust you. And just speak to us tonight. Our hearts are open. In Jesus' name, everyone. Set. Amen. Amen. Come on, you can make some noise. Woo! Awesome, guys. Y'all are so excited. I love it. Hey, um, how
How many of you have ever worked really hard and got n- none of the credit for it? Anybody, anybody in here that's, you ever just worked really hard for something and, and like somebody else get the credit for what you did? Anybody in here? Not just me? Now, I'm going to be honest, okay? I'm going to be honest. Don't stone me to death. Um, I was a guy that got the credit. I wasn't the guy that usually did the work. You see, like when it came to group projects, I love group projects. Like when the teacher said, okay, guys, we got a group project, I was like, yes, because I knew the smartest kids in class. Like that's how I pass. I wasn't smart. I just knew who the smartest kids were. And so every time I was like, all right, guys, this is like a quarter of your grade. I'm like, you, 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 we together, right? Like we good, right? And we would do group projects. I was the guy that didn't do the research. I wasn't the guy that, that like drew everything. Literally, I was the guy that held the poster up and pointed at it when we presented. Anybody else in here? Like, I'm like, they're like, hey, Jory, can you? No. Hey, Jory, what about? No. Hey, Jory, can, no. hey, Jory, can you hold the poster? Yes. Like, I got you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, they were presenting, okay, group number one, go ahead and present. Man, I would carry that poster. I hold it up and just. <laughs> like, I was like, gee, at it. You know? And then they're like, awesome, guys, we get the grade back 100. I was like, yes. See, that's how I passed. I wasn't the smartest. I just knew the smartest people. But, man, I was that guy that always took the credit, especially in school, but I didn't really do the work. But I, th- there was this one time where my, one, of my two, one of my two friends, um, Brett, who, who used to be the youth pastor here, he, um, one of my best, best friends, and one of, when his cousin, which is also my friend Willie, um, they were taking a math class together. They were taking algebra, and it was eighth grade, and I was in their class, but I had that same class, and they were taking a test this Friday, and Brett didn't study. Like, Brett hadn't studied, he didn't do nothing, right? He just didn't really, he didn't like math. But will he study, right? Like, how many of y'all like the studiers? Like, you're like, I study, I'm, I, I want to pass. How many of you are like, I'm just trying to get out of this school, right? So, so Brent was like, eh, I just want to get to high school. Willie was like, no, I got to pass, right? The day comes, they're taking a test. And Brett's smart. He sits really close to Willie. And he kind of like, Brett had really good eyes. So he would just kind of just, just look. And, I mean, you know, Brett just started, you know, cheating a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. And so Brett's like cheating, right? He's cheating on the test. And Willie's like his cousin. We're really good friends. So Willie's kind of like, it's cool. Like, here, I'll help you out. You know, that's what we did. Like, we're homies. And, but don't cheat. Don't do it. And, and so Brett's, Brett's cheating. And now Brett wasn't dumb. You know, he wasn't dumb. Like, he might have cheated, but he wasn't dumb. Because at the end of the test, even though he cheated every question, he like changed some of his answers, right? And that's a smart thing to do because he's like, I don't want to get all the same answers to him because then the teacher's going to figure it out. We're going to get the same grade. Then we're going to get called into the office and then we're both busted. So Brett would change some answers. He's like, all right, cool. Turned it in. So a few days pass. The next week comes and, you know, they get to their math class and the teacher's like, all right, guys, we have your results. Here you go. We're going to give it to you. And Brett gets his paper first, and he turns around and goes, dude, oh, my God, bro, I got an 85, dog. Like, I passed, dude. Like, I did it. And Brett's excited, right? Brett's like, dog, I got it, man. And he's looking at Willie like, man, I did. Thank you so much. I love you. And Willie gets his test. And Brett's like, yo, bro, what you get, dog? Like, what you get, like 100? Because you, like, study, right? And Willie just, like, is red, like, just mad red, just cringes. He just, oh. and he's like, bro, what's up? Like, what you get? Willie goes, I failed. Willie goes, bro, I failed. And Brett's like, what you mean you failed? Like, I got a 68. I failed this test. And Brett's like, I got 85. And Willie goes, how did you pass? He goes, because I changed some of the answers. Like, literally, Willie studied for this test, did everything right, stayed up late, and failed. And all because Brett was just really lucky into passing that math Test. Anybody else in here have ever had that moment where you did all the hard work and just someone else got the credit? Someone else got the better grade? Someone else gets the glory for it? You know, if you've ever been in that moment where you worked really hard on a group project and the other three kids didn't do anything, like me, or maybe if you, you worked really hard to get the position, you worked really hard to pass the test, you worked really hard all summer to make the squad, to get the first chair, be the person that everyone notices, you know, you stay up late, like everyone says in the motivational speaking, you know, you got to be the first one there and the last one to leave. 
And some of you athletes are like, I do that and I still don't start, right? And have you ever been there toward like you're working really hard and you don't get the credit? You know that in your head, you're thinking like, this isn't fair, right? Like in your head, you're just thinking, that just, that's not fair. I should have got that. Willie was thinking in his head, I should have passed that test. Why did Brett pass and not me? I did the work, right? You ever told yourself that? I deserve that spot. What do you mean they got it? He's just the coach's son. Oh, did I get someone? She's just the coach's daughter. Why is she starting and not me? Why does he get the spot and not me? I did everything right. I deserve this. I should be here. And without us even realizing, we sound a lot like those workers who got picked up to work at 6 in the morning. See, if you kind of listen to the passage, there's a story about a boss that meets these guys out on the street at 6 in the morning and says, hey, what are you doing? We need some work. And he's like, come work with me. 6 in the morning. Then he goes again at 9 in the morning, picks some more guys up. 12 in the afternoon, 3 in the afternoon, and then 5 in the afternoon, only one hour left of work. He picks them up. The only thing is, he promises the 6 a.m. guys, you're going to get $1. But he doesn't tell anyone else what they're going to get paid. And then he says, all right, guys, line up, end of the day, 6 o'clock, time to go home. And he tells them, all right, give me the last guys I hired. So the 5 p.m. guys come in expecting maybe like, a, I guess a dime, right? I don't know. Here's a dollar. Oh, dang, dude. That's crazy. Cool, man. We got paid a dollar. We only worked one hour. That's awesome. 3 p.m. guys that got hired come in that only worked three hours. Hey, man, here's a dollar. The 12 p.m. guys come in, here's a dollar. And so for some of you, you've been in the shoes where you're that 6 a.m. guy who's worked all day long. And you're looking down the line, you're saying, wait, they got a dollar? Wait, they, they got a dollar too? Wait, they? That bro worked one hour. Man, that's crazy, dog. We about to get paid like 10 bucks, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're about to get rich, man. We got to, we got to have about that fat check, you know what I'm saying? And then they finally come up, and they're like, ooh, boy, you know what I'm saying, like that. And then he goes, oh, here's your dollar. And we sound a lot like those guys. What? I worked all day long, and I only get paid this? I don't deserve this? It's called entitlement. Wait, Pastor Joe, I thought entitlement was like, you know, the real bougie lady that's really rude and like stuck up and doesn't give anyone anyone. I mean, yes, to a degree. But in fact, if you really think about it, we got a lot of entitlement tendencies in our lives that we don't even realize that we do. Let me give you some examples here. Here's an example of you being entitled. I want you, before I do, you, you have a picture of someone that you think is entitled? You're not going to say that loud. You got something, though, you, can you picture it? Like how, maybe your, maybe your friends, maybe there's someone you sit next to, I'm kidding. You know, but someone that really acts like they're entitled. Let me get you examples of what someone entitled does. You expect the same rules that apply to others, but they actually don't apply to you. You ever done that before? That the rules that actually apply to everyone else, for some reason, they just don't apply to you. Another example is this. You feel burdened when other people ask you for a small favor, but expect that when you ask people for favors, it's not that big of a deal. That ever happened to you? Hey, bro, can you come pick me up? Oh. oh. You ever done that? Oh, I guess. And then you get a flat tire. Bro, can you pick me up? Come on, man. It's urgent, man. I need you to pick me up. What was a burden to you, all of a sudden, it shouldn't be a burden to them. And then whenever they don't do what you ask, you get offended. Ever happened to you? You're always that person that helps somebody else out. But the moment you ask for help, you're all of a sudden a burden. And when you can't do it, even though you've helped them out their entire life, and then you finally need the help, and they all of a sudden get offended because you can't do it, it's entitlement. Another example right here. You expect other people to be more interested in you and what's on your agenda, agenda than you're interested in them and what's on their agenda. I'm going to be flat out and honest. Like, I'm still struggling working on with that. 
And there's a lot of times when my fiance Dale has to like, I mean, she gets mad at me because there's sometimes she's talking and I'm one of those guys that's a processor. And so when they say one word, like if she says like coffee, like I'm like thinking about coffee and I'm like, man, I want some coffee. Where can I get some coffee? And like, ooh, can we get that? And she's still talking. And then finally when she's done, she's like, what do you think? And I'm like, man, like we should go get some coffee. And she's like, wait, what are you talking about coffee? That was like a five minute ago. I said that five minutes ago. Are you even listening? And that right there, without me even knowing it, I'm already acting like I'm entitled. Because what she's interested in and what's on her agenda isn't as important than what's on mine. And then the last one that maybe some of us might experience or maybe even do is that you inconvenience others without even caring about their schedule. That you schedule things around what you have to do instead of actually thinking about what that person might have to do. Hey, bro, can you come over, man? I need your help to do this. Dude, I got, I got family. No, bro, leave and come help me because I need your help. Bro, what the heck, dude? Are you even like a bro to me now? Like, oh, do you even care? Oh, girls, come on, you know, dude. Hey, can you come over? It's an emergency. I really, do. hey, I can't make it. Like, like, I'm with my boyfriend. We're going out. Right now. Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? Are you choosing him over me? Are you serious? Forget it. Like, I'm not even going to go anymore. Entitlement. And we read those, and there's even more. There's a whole list. And all of a sudden, we realize that this entitlement kryptonite thing is actually more real in our lives than we actually think. That you don't need to be driving a fancy car and be rich and have a lot of money and followers to feel entitled. In fact, we do it even without all that. See, the problem with entitlement is this, that if you live an entitled life, if you live with the perspective that you're entitled and that people deserve and should give you things, you end up hurting yourself and the other people around you the longer you live. See, because what I found out is that entitlement, the root of entitlement, is selfishness. And can I be honest, selfishness kills. The root of entitlement, you thinking that people need to give you something or that you deserve something, the root of that is selfishness, and selfishness kills. See, I've seen close relationships, close friendships, bonds that should have never been broken break up. Because why? Because you got selfish people coming together thinking one's entitled to the other. You know what entitlement does to your friendship? It makes you compare and compete. If you allow entitlement to slip into your relationship, into your friendships, even in your family, all of a sudden you'll start seeing two people start comparing and competing. And you know what happens when one person stops wanting to play a game that the other person keeps winning in? The person walks and leaves. And the person that's having fun because they're winning the same game over and over again wonders, where did they go? Why don't they want to play anymore? Why don't they want to be my friend? And in actuality, in reality, they end up being the real loser in life. Because at the end of it all, no one wants to be around them. Why? Because they compared and competed every single time. You know what competition does in the wrong way in your friendship? It makes you walk over people and not even care once about it. You allow entitlement, this idea that people owe you something in your life, it will make you compare and compete and ruin relationships in your life. That's the problem with entitlement. So tonight, I just want to give you three simple things that I believe that we can do that can break the spirit of entitlement. The first thing I believe that we can do, number one, is this. I want you to write down. The, number one, the first way that we can break the spirit of entitlement is understanding grace. Everyone say grace. grace. Understanding grace. Maybe if you've been in church, you've been around church, maybe, you, maybe you're new to this and you've heard that even though you haven't been in church, but you always hear that, right? Come on, the grace of God. Who's ever heard that? By the grace of God. Come on, God's grace, right? And then the pastor's like, come on, let's shout an amen and everyone starts getting crazy. The piano, ting, 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 right? And you're like, what the heck is this grace thing? Like, who's grace? Like, is Jesus God and who's grace? Like, I don't even know her, right? And then grace steps into the picture and like, what is that? Can I just explain it to you really quickly? I just want to explain grace in the simple terms. Grace, the meaning of grace is this, not getting what you deserve. That's grace. Grace is not getting what you actually 
deserve. See, in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the Bible says what? I think it should be behind me. That for the wages of sin is what? Death. That the wages of sin, that if you live a sinful life, that you're getting paid what? Death. Now, now I'm, not, I'm not up here to condemn. I'm not up here to preach at you. I'm preaching with you. But I got to lay the foundation down to let you know that, that the sin in our lives leads us to death. And maybe you don't know, never read the Bible. You go to the very first book of the Bible, the very first page you read in Genesis that you realize that God created the earth, the heavens, the skies, the galaxies, you know, your hips, fingertips, lips, and all that, right? He created man. Man sins by eating an apple, right? Gets deceived by the devil, and now sin enters into the picture. Sin is the one thing that separates us from God. It's our kryptonite. And now, because of that, thousands of years ago, we now live in a broken, fallen world. You turn on the news, there's another killing in Canada, there's another killing around the world, there's another shooting, there's another explosion, there's another suicide, there's another famous person that's going out. Why? Because we live in a broken, fallen world, because sin entered into the picture. And can I lay the foundation to let you guys know, maybe you've never been in church, that it is because of our sin in our life. And if the Bible is true, which it is, that sin leads us to death. In fact, the cross that Jesus hung on is the cross that we should have been on. That in fact, the cross was actually our funeral. But the Bible says that God saw an issue. That sin separated us, man and God separated us and said, God said, I need to bring a solution in. So he sent his son down to earth, trade your spots, substitute his life for ours. And now Jesus, the son of God, is hanging on his tree and not us. So now by God's grace, what we deserve, because grace is what? Not getting what we deserve, right? What we deserve is what? Death. But by God's grace, we now get life. You see, when you get to understand grace, when you get to understand what Jesus did for you, you can't help but just be humble. You can't help but live a life of humility. The Bible says that for by grace, everyone say grace, you have been saved. It even says through faith that you didn't do any of it. See, this is the part where a lot of preachers start condemning people. You know, you're a sinner, and you should be dead, and you should be six feet under, and you did this wrong, so all your sins are going to take you to hell, and they start preaching all wrong. But can I tell you that in Romans, 6, um, Romans chapter 6, verse 23, there's another part to it? Because the beginning of that scripture says what? For the wages of sin is death. But if you continue to read it, it says this, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. See, that first scripture that for the wages of death lets us know that, hey, we're messed up. We're broken. We're jacked up. We got some issues in our life. But you read the other half, but by grace, this free gift that God has given you, meaning that God did all the work, you did absolutely nothing. That gives us life, that gives us hope, that lets us know that we actually get a future. See, grace is not getting what we deserve. What we deserve is death. What we deserve is to be on the cross. But by grace, God took our place so that we could live as Jesus did. See, if we want to break this entitlement sin, entitlement kryptonite, we need to understand grace. The second thing I want to tell you, if we want to break this entitlement issue that we have, the second thing is this. If we want to break this spirit of entitlement, we need to have a heart of gratitude. Everyone say gratitude. And I remember this one time, um, my friends and I, those me and like three other three of us, we can have the band come up and play. I'm almost done. I got one more point out of this. But um, I remember this, this one time, we were in English class, our sophomore year, and uh, we we're taking AP English. At that time, I did, and it was myself and my three friends, and we had a test on Friday, and we didn't study. Um, we just didn't study for 
were in our teacher had told us every day, study for this test, it's huge, it's a big test, study, we should study. And so we come in that Friday, myself and my three friends, didn't study, and we're walking in, head down, gosh, and my mom was serious about my grades, so I remember walking in, I'm like, gosh, man, she gonna kill me. Man, I'm already gonna get a test. I already know it. Like, I'm already praying, like, Jesus, forgive me, because I'm going to go to heaven tonight. Like, yeah, she knows I feel like I'm done, right? And I'm already, like, sad. I pull out my pencil, and I'm just, all right, Miss, here's my test. And I remember she steps onto the front of the classroom, and she's like, hey, guys, so um, I got bad news um, due to some technical difficulties, um, and we weren't able to get the test out. So today we're actually, you know, we're not gonna take, take the test in fact. Um, Y'all, we're just going to go ahead and let you guys pay, I mean, pay. we're going to let you guys pass, all of you pass, y'all, we're going to have to take the test. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm, okay, I'm not even kidding when this happened. When, whenever she said that, like, guys, I'm sorry, like, I'm like, this, please don't be sorry. But the moment she told us that we didn't have to take a test, and even better, that we already passed without taking the test, like the moment she said it, I'm not even kidding me. Myself and my three other friends, the only people, we literally jump out of our seat. Yes! Like legit, like, oh my gosh, yes! Like the only people. Ain't nobody else in the room. Everyone else was like, oh, I'm like, you better shut up. Yes! Like we get out, like, oh my gosh, like, yes! Like we literally get out of our seats, go to our teacher, thank you so much. You're so awesome. We start thanking her. We're like, Miss, you're the best teacher ever. And it's just literally us four. And how much more obvious could we have made it that we did not study for this test? Like everyone else was kind of like, no, okay, cool, I passed, whatever. But for my, myself, my three friends, we were like, oh my gosh. Because why? We didn't deserve to pass the test. We didn't, we didn't study for it. We didn't deserve it. We didn't earn that uh, passing grade. But, but because all of a sudden, for some reason, I don't even care. I'm just saying that was God because he knew we, right? He was like, I don't want you to die, so I need you to preach. So I'm like, thank you, Jesus. And, and so like, because, I mean, we didn't deserve to pass that test. But because of the fact that we didn't deserve to pass and she let us pass, we couldn't help to be thankful. You ever have a moment in your life where somebody gives you something, it's a present, and you're like, no, 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 I can't take it. I don't deserve that. Like, you can't give that to me. Like, no, 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 take the money. Your grandma ever do that to you? Your grandma just gives you, I mean, a wad of cash. You're like, grandma, where'd you get the money from? She's like, shh, don't worry about it. And she's like, here, take the money. And you're like, Grandma, I can't take it, Grandma. Like, no, but you'll bug your mom for it. But like, Grandma, you're like, no, Grandma, I can't take it. She's like, no, take it. You're like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Isn't it funny, the fact that when you don't deserve something and someone gives it to you, how your heart is so grateful for it? Man, I realized when I thought about that story, that man, we look like idiots, my friends and I in that English class. Like if someone had a camera and record us, we looked dumb celebrating for the fact that we ain't got to take a test and we pass. But can I be real honest? It's the same way we live when it comes to God. So many people look at us as Christians, I'm being flat and honest, and they look and say, like, dude, what are y'all, like, that's weird. And maybe some of you in here, you look around when we sing songs, you're like, that's kind of weird. Like, why are you lifting your hands and why are you like... That's kind of awkward. I don't get it. You want to know why when we sing that we can't help but lift our hands? You want to know why whenever we start playing this music and whenever someone starts preaching and we clap when it's good? You know why? Because we all of a sudden are reminded about the grace of God and what he did for us. And whenever we remember what God did in our life, I can't help but just say thank you so much, God. You're so good. I should have been dead. I shouldn't be on this stage. I don't deserve to be on this stage. I'm not that good. I'm not that smart, I'm not that great at speaking, but by your grace and me being able to not get what I deserve, I can't help but just say thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much, God. The same way we looked at our teacher, thank you so much, miss. You're the best. You are just so grateful. Let me tell you something, that when you're grateful, you don't have room to let me say that again. A grateful heart that is a heart that is full of gratitude, when your heart is filled with thanksgiving, 
you meaning that you're grateful for everything you have in your life. You have no room in your heart to compare and compete. I've never seen anyone that is grateful for anything in their life compare it to somebody else. Why? Because when you're wrapped in thanksgiving and when you're wrapped with gratitude and you're looking at the things in your life and you're saying, thank you so much. Oh my God, thank you. Thank you, God. That is amazing. You don't have time to look up and be like, oh, why, why did he get that? But, but why does she have that? I got the old palette. Why does she get the new palette? I challenge you guys, the first thing, try waking up the first thing you do and just saying thank you, God. And name off the smallest things. God, thank you for this jacket that I'm sweating in. Thank you, God, that I can even sweat. Thank you, God, for the shoelaces, my jeans, and I'm not up here and like torn up, raggedy stuff. Like, thank you, God, that I can come to this church. Thank you, God, that I... When you just start, just living a life and having a heart full of gratitude, it, you, you, it, you will see your life change. You won't have time to compare. You won't have time to look at what other people have. You won't have time to be jealous of the other things. You won't have time to even feel entitled. Why? Because you're so busy saying, thank you, God. Oh my gosh, you're so good. Gratitude will change this world. You remember and understand God's grace and what he did for your life. You can't help to be grateful. And the third thing, closing out here, the third thing that I believe that we can do to break entitlement in our lives, serving others. I truly believe there's only one person in this world that's ever walked this planet that actually had the right to feel entitled. And that's Jesus. There's only one person I believe in this world that actually had a right to walk around feeling entitled, walking around feeling like, man, I'm the best person up. Jesus. The Bible says that he was perfect, that he didn't sin, that every time he walked into a church, he was actually the only person that wasn't a hypocrite in there. The dude was literally the son of God. In fact, he was 100% God. He had every right to walk around entitled. But you know what he did? The opposite. The Bible says actually in Mark, it says that even for the son of God did not come to be served, to serve. The highest name above all of the names, the Bible says, is Jesus. Name above every name. The King among kings. The Lord of lords, the Bible describes him as. Had every right to walk around. Who's going to serve me? Who's going to pick me up and take me into the city? Who's going to feed me? And even if he did it, we would have looked at his life thinking, I mean, he has the right to do it. Like... He's the only person that could. But even though he knew he could have done that, he didn't come to this earth to be served, but he came. Like I said earlier, the root of entitlement is selfishness. You know how we break selfishness? About other people. You know what's going to save this world and all the chaos that we're in? Turn on the news, guys. Look on Twitter. I ended this week, there's another killing, there's another addiction, there's another person going out, there's another issue in this world. You know what's going to save this world? When we as the church remember and understand God's grace, and then we just start thanking Him, and above all that, we, by because of what He did for us, we just start serving other people. Serving will help you get yourself out of your own head. Serving other people will stop you from thinking that you're the center of the universe. Serving will save you from this kryptonite called entitlement. Why? Because when you're busy serving other people, Jesus literally washed his disciples' 
feet. You can't even think about being entitled when you're on your knees washing some dirty feet. Like, how much more humble can you get? The Son of God would get on his knees and say, no, let me wash your feet. Showing us that I, even though I, I can act entitled, I'm not. I'm not going to be selfish. But I'm going to serve you. I'm going to take care of you first. I'm going to make sure that you're clean. That you're taken care of. Guys, we really want to make a change in this world. We really want to see a difference in our lives, in your family's life. It starts with understanding grace. And a grateful heart because of the grace. And now doing something about it in that serving. We're going to break this thing called entitlement. No longer will we even be a generation that walks around thinking that people owe us. Because we won't have time to think that. Why? Because we're going to be so busy serving other people, loving other people, having grace on other people. Why? Because God did it to us so we can't help to do it to them. Thank you so much for checking out this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Go ahead and click that subscribe button and make sure you like the video. Tune in next week for another amazing message.